All right, let's take a look at the lattice deformer. And this is, again, another episode of Industry Standard versus Blender. I'm gonna be looking at how to do a lattice deformer in Maya and then how to do a lattice deformer in Blender. And then again, at the end of the video, I'm gonna kind of let you know which one I prefer and which one I think is faster, more efficient. So let's go ahead and kind of dive right in. So I'm gonna start with Maya. And okay, I've got my character here. And let's say if I wanted to make some edits, okay? Let's say if I wanted to kind of like deform the mesh and pull it and kind of stretch it, that type of thing. Well, I can add a lattice deformer. So if I'm in the modeling menu set, I'm gonna go up here to deform and then here's lattice. And I wanna make sure that the object is selected first. If I go to deform lattice, I can see it forms the lattice around my character. And if I go to the channel box, so over here I can click on this, I can see that here's my attributes for the lattice. So I can go to subdivisions, and by the way, if I click on the word, I can middle mouse drag, and you can see that I can kind of add some subdivisions like that. Maybe I'll add some subdivisions this way as well. And what's happening is I can right click, go to lattice point, and now if I grab these lattice points, anything within that zone until it gets to another point can be affected. Okay, so if I wanted to kind of affect more, I could kind of go like this and you can see how I can kind of stretch that. So if I wanted to kind of make, um, I don't know, more, kind of more cartoony proportions, I could come here and I can go like this. So instead of kind of like trying to grab all of your points, um, you can kind of just grab like influence points, if you will. And maybe I go like this and maybe I scale. And you can kind of see here that I'm getting kind of an interesting look by just kind of um, affecting the points that are affecting the object. And, and there you can kind of see how I'm getting that. One thing I want to point out is if I grab this shape and if I move this out of the lattice zone, you can see it becomes back to normal. And then if I go like this, okay, it's now warping back to kind of how it was in the lattice. So I can see that that's really um, kind of cool. And if I wanted to con um, confirm this, I could just go to edit delete by type history, and now the lattice is gone and, and this is kind of my new model. So that's how the lattice looks in Maya. Let's take a look at how the lattice looks in Blender. Okay, so I've got the same shape here and I wanna add a lattice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do Shift A and then you can see here's lattice down here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a lattice and there it is in my scene. I can press S to scale. I'm just gonna make that kind of big enough like that. And um, if I press S and then if I do um, X, now I could scale this way, okay? Okay, great, now it's fitting in there. And now I want to uh, give it some more divisions. So on this lattice, I can come down here to the object data properties and I could type in my numbers and you can see, I believe this is exactly the same numbers that I had in Maya. Okay, no, I wanna do, uh, I think two here, and then maybe five here. It, it doesn't obviously really matter, but just so you can kind of see apples to apples comparison. And now, once I'm done, you might think, well, now I can start pulling these, but actually we still have to do one more thing. If I select my object, the object doesn't know about the lattice yet. So what I need to do is I need to select the object. I have to go to my modifier on this wrench, and then I go here, and then I click on lattice. And by the way, if I'm just here, I can middle mouse, wheel, and it's gonna kind of go up and down the list, so that's kind of cool. But I'm gonna click on lattice, and then it's gonna say, hey, what lattice do you want to affect this? Because if you had multiple lattices, or lati in the group, if you will, um, I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna say lattice. Or I could click on the eyedropper and select it here, but I'm just gonna choose, hey, I want this lattice to affect it. Now, if I go back here, I should be able to go edit in edit mode and grab this, and now I can go like this. And again, of course, if I go like this and just press G, now I can kind of grab it and move it like that. I could grab this, G, 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 okay. Kind of cool. So I feel like, again, kind of the same idea. Um, Let's see what happens if I move this out. So it looks like it's, there's not really a history, it looks like that is um, established there. It looks like it's 
kind of staying there. Oh, actually, it looks like there is history if I move it to kind of to the side here. So um, that's kind of interesting. So if I wanted to, uh, um, I could go like this, and I could go to um, apply the lattice. So if I wanted there to not be history, because you can see, again, I can move it like this, I would have to, again, apply the lattice. And the way that I do that is in object mode, come over here and just hit apply. Now I could I could delete the lattice, it doesn't matter, and you can see that the shape stays there and I can move it just fine and it's not going to get rid of it. Um, so that's kind of like deleting the history in Maya. So again, I feel like the lattice, the functionality of it is very similar in both programs. If I had to pick one program for this, I think I would give a thumbs up to Maya. I think Maya, it feels a little quicker. I don't have to like create an independent visual lattice, shape it around the thing, and then apply it. It just seems a little clunky in Blender. Um, so this time, again, thumbs up to Maya for the lattice. All right, if this was helpful, make sure to subscribe, like, comment below, and again, share this with your friends. All right, thanks a lot, guys.